Good afternoon, class. Today we are going to conclude Chapter 4. So we're still talking about electrons right now. There are two ways to represent the electrons of any particular element. The first are orbital diagrams. The second are electron configurations. Let's talk about orbital diagrams first. Orbital diagrams use boxes to show how electrons are first arranged in the orbitals of an atom, how they fill the orbitals and the energy levels from the lowest level to the highest energy level, lowest to highest, and fill orbitals within the same sublevel one at a time before pairing the electrons. If you look at this diagram at the top of the page, you will see the periodic table of elements represented in blocks. There are the S blocks in yellow, the P blocks in green, the D blocks in orange, and the F blocks in purple. The way that we fill an orbital diagram of any element is to start in the upper left and work our way across the periodic table from left to right. Meaning any element, no matter where it is on the periodic table, must first fill the preceding levels. So if we are somewhere over here, we must first get through the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, the 3s, the 3p, the 4s, the 3d, the 4p, the 5s, the 4d, and then into the 5p. So again, for any element, we fill from left to right across the periodic table. You will find a version of this diagram in D2L that you may use to practice learning to fill your elements. So let's try carbon. Where does carbon fall on this diagram? Well, if you look at your periodic table, you will see that carbon falls here in the second of the two P's. So the way that we fill carbon is we fill the 1s first, and there are two electrons that go in the 1s. So the orbital diagram, we write 1s, and then we draw a box, and inside that 1s there are two electrons, one up, one down. Next, here we come back, we get to level 2. Next we have the 2s. Carbon is past the 2s, so the 2s is full. So we write 2s, then we draw a box, one arrow up, one arrow down to represent this level is full. Carbon is then in the 2p. It is two boxes into the 2p, so it has one, two electrons in the 2p. So 2p has a total of six possible electrons, right, or three boxes, but we don't pair the electrons if we don't have to. Since there are only two, we put two arrows, one in each of the first two boxes. You can think of this as if you and your best friend are going to go rent an apartment. Say the only apartment available has three bedrooms. Are the two of you going to share one bedroom, leaving the other two to sit empty? Of course not. The two of you would each want your own room. So electrons, if they are not forced to share, will have their own special separate box. So again, we fill within the same level one at a time before pairing the electrons. Let's try another example. Let's draw the orbital diagram for the element oxygen. If you look at your periodic table, you will see that oxygen is two spots past carbon. So oxygen is here. Therefore, starting at the beginning, right, oxygen has a full 1s. Oxygen is past the 1s. So we have 1s, one box, two electrons. The 2s, oxygen is also past the 2s, so the 2s is full. We draw a little box, put two arrows to show it is full. Now oxygen is within the 2p, and in the 2p there are 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons. So again, our 2p can hold up to 6, right, with 3 orbitals. So we say 1, 2, 3. Well, we still have one more to place, so that one more must share. So we place that in the first box, pointing down. Okay. Again, orbital diagrams, electrons do not share unless they must, and you fill across the periodic table left to right. Depending on where your electron is depends on how far you have to go. So for an example, an atom over here, you would fill 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and then into the 3p. 
Electron configuration gives the same information as an orbital diagram, but slightly less. It will show you where the electrons are, but it takes up a lot less room than drawing out an orbital diagram. It still indicates the placement of electrons in an atom, and shows how electrons fill the energy levels and sublevels in order of increasing energy. However, it doesn't show the spins, the arrows up and down. We can also use an abbreviated form of this using a noble gas to represent all electrons preceding it. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, electron configuration. The first number in an electron configuration tells you the level. Level 1, level 2, level 3. Remembering that a level 1 holds an S, a 2 holds an S and a P, a 3 holds an S, a P, and a D. The second number tells you the type of orbital. We have four types, S, P, D, and F. The third number, the superscript, tells you the number of electrons in that particular orbital. So the electron configuration for carbon, which we just did the orbital diagram for, right? we said the 1S was full, so there were two electrons in the 1S. We said the 2s was full, so there are two electrons in there. And we said that in the p, there were only two electrons, right? Which we drew, the 2p, right? We drew in the orbital diagram like this. We read this notation from left to right as 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. You can do this for any element on the periodic table. Hydrogen has one electron. That one electron starts on level one in the s orbital. Helium has two electrons. Again, we always start with level one, always start with the s. If you look at this table here, we always fill left to right across the periodic table following the blocks. So helium has two electrons. It is the 1s2. Lithium, if we go back to our previous table, has three electrons. Three electrons. So lithium has two here, one here. So the electron configuration for lithium is 1s2, 2s1. What about the next element, beryllium? Beryllium has four electrons. So it has two in the 1s, two in the 2s. So its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. How about boron? Boron has 5. Again, if we go back to our previous table, that is 2 in the first one, 2 in the second one, right? And now we're coming across to the 2p. So we have 1 in the 2p. So the electron configuration for boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, but there's only one electron in there. So it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. How about carbon, which we did previously? We said that carbon was here. So carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Anyone noticing a pattern? The next element after carbon is nitrogen, which has one more electron. It would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And the next element after that, oxygen, would be 2p4, and then 2p5, 2p6. The next element after neon, which is 2p6, we would come around and back to the 3s. So the next element in 3s would be sodium, which would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And then magnesium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And then aluminum, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. And so on, all the way across the periodic table. So if you know where your blocks are, you can travel across the periodic table writing your electron configuration. 
We also have something we call the abbreviated electron configuration. Because sometimes when we get to atoms much further down the periodic table, even your electron configuration, which is shorter than your orbital diagram, can become really long. The way that we do the abbreviated electron configuration is to take the noble gas before whatever element you are looking at, put that noble gas in two square brackets, for example, maybe it's helium, and then write every electron after that noble gas. For example, let's go back to our table here. Let's say that we are going to do the abbreviated electron configuration for sulfur. Sulfur falls here in the 3p block. The noble gas before sulfur, i.e. the one up here, is neon. So we would write neon in square brackets and then everything after neon. So after neon is the 3s, 3s2, and the 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3p4. So the condensed abbreviation is neon in square brackets, 3s2, 3p4. This prevents you from having to write really long strings of electron configurations. So let's try a comprehensive example. Let's do nitrogen, the orbital diagram, and the electron configuration. Nitrogen, if you look at your periodic table, has seven electrons. So its orbital, con orbital diagram, it's going to have some in the 1s, some in the 2s, and some in the 2p. So let's see here, we need seven. One, two, three, four five, six, seven. Again, remembering that they don't share unless they must. The electron configuration is just the orbital diagram in shorthand. 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. If we were to look at the condensed form of this, the noble gas before nitrogen is helium, so it would be helium in square brackets, and everything after helium, which would be 2s2, 2p3. For further practice on this, please see one of the supplemental lectures. Oh, we have one more example. Let's do the orbital diagram and electron configuration for phosphorus. Let's use our periodic table and not look at our previous notes. Phosphorus. If we look at the periodic table, phosphorus has 15 electrons. If we follow across the periodic table, you will see that phosphorus is past the 1s, past the 2s, past the 2p, past the 3s, and into the 3p. Okay. Since up to the 3p everything is full, let's go ahead and just draw our arrows. Now, when we get to the 3p, we see that phosphorus has three electrons in the 3p, so each one goes in its own box. If we write this in condensed notation, we get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then there are only three in the 3p, so 3p3. To condense this further, we look at the noble gas before phosphorus, which is neon, and then we put everything after neon. So everything after neon is the 3s2, 3p3. Now let's talk about the size of all the elements on the periodic table. So there is a nice clear trend. As we go down the periodic table, our atoms get larger, as you can see in this nice illustration. As we go across the periodic table, you might think that the atoms would also get larger. As we go down the periodic table, we're adding electrons. So, of course, we're getting larger. As we go across the periodic table, we're also adding electrons. So, wouldn't you think that the size would get larger as you go across? Well, that is true. However, within each block, all of those electrons are in the same size orbital. So that does not really increase our size much. For example, the p-block. 
one electron in the P block versus two, versus three, versus four, versus five, versus six, wouldn't really change our size much. However, the more electrons that a nucleus must keep track of within an orbital causes the nucleus to hold the electrons a little bit tighter to itself. So believe it or not, as we go across the periodic table, the size decreases slightly. You may notice this is nowhere near as large a trend as the increase is as we go down. However, there it is. It's a small decrease in size as you go across the periodic table, a large increase in size as you go down the periodic table. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level, but only for S and P electrons. So even if you have electrons in the D or F sublevel, they are not counted as valence electrons. So valence electrons are in the outermost energy level in S and P orbitals. So to determine the number of valence electrons, you look for the highest number. In the case of phosphorus, the highest number are the threes. Within the threes, we have two S's and three P's. So phosphorus has five valence electrons. There is a much easier way to do this, however, than writing out the electron configuration or the orbital diagram. The group number of an element also tells you the number of valence electrons for representative elements, meaning all elements except the transition metals. So for example, all elements in group 1A have one valence electron. All elements in group 2A have two valence electrons. Skipping over the transition metals, all elements in group 3A or group 13, depending on the type of periodic table you're looking at, have three valence electrons. So 3A or 13 have three. Anybody want to guess what 4A or 14 have? Exactly, four valence electrons. And 15 or 5A? You guessed it, five valence electrons. 16 or 6A? Boy, you guys are on top of this today. Six valence electrons, and so on, all the way up through group 18. Group 18, of course, are our noble metals. All noble metals have an electron configuration, or rather, I'm sorry, a number of valence electrons of eight. Let's try an example. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Well, where does chlorine fall on the periodic table? Chlorine on the periodic table is in group 7A or 17. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. You could also tell this by its electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. The highest number is 3. Within the 3, you have 2 and 5. 2 plus 5 equals 7 valence electrons. We use Lewis dot symbols to represent the valence electrons as dots placed on the sides of the symbol. 1 to 4 valence electrons are arranged as single dots. Just like with our orbital diagram, 5 to 8 valence electrons are arranged with at least one pair around the symbol. Here is an example of the Lewis dot structure for magnesium. All of these are okay, right? The dots are separated. We do not write this like this, right? We don't put the electrons together until we have to. So let's do an example. Let's do nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 15 or 5A, so it has five valence electrons. We start by separating them, one, two, three, four. Now the fifth one must be paired. It doesn't matter whether you pair it here or on top or on bottom, right? As long as you only have one pair. Ionization energy. Remember that an ion is an atom with a charge. 
So ionization energy is the energy necessary to remove one of the outermost electrons. Since electrons have negative charge and protons have positive charges, in an atom, the protons and electrons are equal. In an ion, the protons and electrons are not equal, and we have a charge. So for example, if sodium loses one electron, it becomes sodium with a charge of plus one. It has lost one negative charge. As the distance from the nucleus to the valence electron increases, the ionization energy decreases. So the further away your electron is, the easier it is to take it away. The further away it is, the easier it is to take it away. The ionization energy is low for metals and high for nonmetals, meaning nonmetals don't like to give away electrons. Metals do. So metals have low ionization energy, it is easy to take their electrons, and nonmetals have high ionization energy, it's hard to take their electrons. So an element with metallic character is one that easily loses its valence electrons. Metallic character is more prevalent in metals on the left-hand side of the periodic table. This concludes Chapter 4, Part 3. Thank you for listening.